Hello everyone and welcome to the Life in the Universe pandemic series. Uh, these are a short series of lectures for all of you in confinement, like me, uh, the first day of UK national lockdown, who might be interested in topics about life in the universe. So these are just some subjects that interest me, I thought might uh, interest you as well. So today I want to talk about uh, a question that I think is very interesting. Can prisons help us explore space? Now if you think about it for a moment, uh, prisons are not so different from settlements that we might imagine on the moon or Mars. They are confined environments, uh, the people inside them can't leave easily, uh, and people who do live within them have to learn to get on with one another. In fact, I'm sure that some of you are beginning to feel the same thing at the moment, uh, being in confinement during this pandemic, and I'm sure in about a month's time uh, I will feel very much the same way. So perhaps talking about prisons and space exploration uh, is not so far removed from what we're all experiencing uh, at the moment. Now this topic is not so much um, about uh, a particularly general area of space exploration, it's more about a specific uh, program that we have developed at the University of Edinburgh that I thought I'd tell you about and we thought you might be interested in it. And if any of you uh, work in prisons or have colleagues who work in prisons, uh, they might find this interesting uh, as well. So it's all about the Life Beyond program and I'll come back to this book um, in a second. It occurred to me a long time ago that prisons are a bit like uh, Luna and Mars settlement. Uh, and so it seemed to me that perhaps prisoners um, have something to offer us in terms of understanding how we might successfully settle these environments, or they might have some particularly creative ideas about how to explore and eventually settle space. So I went to the Scottish Prison Service and proposed this idea, and we ran a pilot scheme in Scottish prisons where we went and gave lectures on astrobiology and space exploration to see what the response was. And we discovered that there was enormous appetite for space exploration. And so from the pilot scheme, uh, I developed a four week course called Life Beyond uh, that we are now implementing in Scottish prisons, I think with uh, really quite spectacular results. Uh, and this is the way it works. In, in the first week, we go to Scottish prisons or the prison that's taking part in the course. And we get the participants to think about uh, what are the challenges of living in an extraterrestrial environment. So imagine you're on Mars, where do you get your water from? Well, you've got to go and dig it out from the poles or you've got to extract it from the atmosphere. And what about the oxygen you need to breathe? Uh, we take it for granted that we can just breathe the air around us. But on Mars, you're gonna to have to get your oxygen, uh, for example, from breaking down water into hydrogen and oxygen in electrolysis and releasing the oxygen gas that you then breathe. Uh, what about the high radiation levels on the surface of Mars? How do you grow your crops? and so on and so forth. So the first week is really about getting to grips with the challenges, uh, the physical challenges in particular, of living in extraterrestrial environments. Then in the second week, we are transitioning to getting the prisoners to think about how to design their station. So if, for example, you need oxygen, you're going to need a module that uh, processes water to produce the oxygen you breathe. If you're growing crops, you're going to need some sort of greenhouse or a module in which you can grow food. And you then need to think about what you're doing there in the first place. If you're on Mars uh, looking for life, maybe studying the ancient geology of that planet, you need a scientific laboratory. So you can now begin to use the extremities of these uh, extraterrestrial environments to think about how to design your station. And then we leave the participants of the course for a few weeks to design their station either in their own cells or they come together in the learning center every couple of weeks as a group and start coordinating their station design. One group might focus on vehicles, another group might focus on life support systems, another group might think about the scientific requirements and so on and so forth. And this is when the course really gets into its own because one of the thrilling things about space exploration is that no one really has the right answers. We don't really know how to live on the surface of the moon or Mars or what the best solutions are. So in that sense, anyone's ideas are as good as anyone else's. And we find that the participants of the course uh, really begin to spread their wings creatively. Some of the course participants are scientists and engineers. They think about the nitty gritty of the station design. Uh, some of them are artists and prefer to spend their time painting their station. This is Elysium Station, which is one of the stations designed by participants in Her Majesty's Prison, Glenockel, and some of them are musically inclined. We even had some participants write Martian blues music 
If ever you're on the surface of Mars uh, listening to music, just remember that the first Martian blues music was written in a prison in Scotland. Other people have written uh, songs about the moon and so on and so forth. The course lends itself to all sorts of creativity in all sorts of directions. And that's one of the most exciting aspects of the course is it really is an open book. Anyone can take uh, any particular part of living in uh, extraterrestrial environments and run with it in any different direction they choose, whether it's scientific, uh, artistic, musical, and so on and so forth. In the third week of the course, we bring the prisoners together and we have them present their station designs. And then we ask every person in the course to spend the next week coming up with an artifact of exploration in that environment. For example, for the artistically inclined, it could be a poster, a tourist poster enticing people to come to Mars. It could be uh, building a small model of the station, or it could be writing an historic timeline. Uh, in one of our courses, some of the participants wrote a 200 year timeline of the political and economic events that occurred on the Earth and Mars uh, during the existence of their Mars station. It was a tremendously powerful and ambitious um, exercise in literary skills, thinking ahead 200 years and writing about all the different uh, organizations that may have come and gone on the Earth and Mars over that time. Um, in the fourth week, we transition into thinking about the societal structures in our Mars station. What are the characteristics of people that will make that station successful? For example, they must be selfless. They must get on with one another. Um, what are the governance structures we can imagine in our extraterrestrial settlement? Is it going to be a military command? Is it going to be um, democratic? And so in the fourth week, the prisoners turn their minds towards civic responsibilities and social structures. And in some ways, uh, what's exciting about that week is the prisoners can start to think about their own situation in prison. What do they think are the optimum uh, management structures for confined environments? What are the best characteristics of people to live in confined environments like selflessness? So they can begin to think about their own situation in prison and some of the characteristics of people that live in prison that might be necessary to make those environments successful. In some sense, it has a little bit of self-reflection built into it, but projected to other worlds. What's exciting about these four weeks is that over that period, um, the participants engage in a whole range of things from literary skills, artistic skills, scientific knowledge, uh, civic responsibilities, democracy, and so on and so forth. There's no end to um, the, the way in which they can use their, um, their skills to, to improve their own insights and their own abilities that may be useful for them uh, ultimately when they come to leave prison. It's well known that education reduces chance of, chances of reoffending. We know that education within prisons improves the knowledge that prisoners have and reduces the chance they will end up back in prisons. So the sorts of um, programs uh, that exist in prisons, including our own, uh, which of course is part of uh, the wider offering by Fife College, who, who run the education contract in Scottish prisons, uh, can contribute to this wider goal of improving education in prisons. Now, quite apart from the participants getting an enjoyment of simply doing the course, uh, one of the things that is exciting is to make sure there's a product at the end of it. And one of the things that we've done at the University of Edinburgh is to form a collaboration with the British Interplanetary Society to publish the work of the prisoners. And this is the first book that was published, Life Beyond From Prison to Mars. And I have absolutely no compunction in recommending this book to you. You can get it on Amazon. Um, it's uh, produced by the society. There's a tiny bit of overhead um, profit that's made that goes into education programs at the British Interplanetary Society, uh, British education programs in space exploration and settlement. So indirectly, the prisoners are also contributing to other education programs. Otherwise, the purpose of this book is to get this material out to the wider world. We send these books to space agencies and space organizations. Uh, we even sent a copy to the European Astronaut Center and several uh, very generous astronauts signed the inside of the book after reading it and sent it back to uh, Glen Ockle Prison and we gave it to the prisoners. And what they could see is that within four weeks, they had gone from no knowledge of space exploration to a book that was being signed off by European Space Agency astronauts. 
And that's a tremendously powerful experience for them. Uh, many people in prisons have negative experiences of education or they've not necessarily been to uh, particularly good schools. And as a result, they tend to have um, rather a, a, a negative view of the whole educational experience. But by going through this process of learning about other planets and moons, which is fundamentally quite an ambitious thing to do, to design a station on another planet, and to end up writing a book that's read by astronauts, shows prisoners that education can be fun, it can very rapidly become creative, and in very short order you can produce something uh, that is of enormous benefit to other people, including the exploration and settlement of space. And as we like to say about the Life Beyond program, uh, its overall objective is to show that from behind the confines of a prison, you can direct humanity to the stars. One of the things that we're doing at the moment is taking our experience in Scottish prisons and developing a general set of course materials that can be used by anyone. Of course, at the University of Edinburgh, uh, we have particular experience in astrobiology and space exploration, but that's not true of all educators. So what we're doing at the moment is, is writing resources and workbooks so that anyone can implement this course in prisons, whether it's in the UK or elsewhere in the world. And that will be finished uh, in a few months. And that's one of the reasons why I mentioned at the beginning of this talk, if you know of anyone who works in prisons or who has colleagues who work in prisons, uh, do get them to watch this video and drop me an email and uh, they too could pick up these materials and implement them uh, in a prison if they're interested. And it will include um, knowledge about space exploration, slides about space exploration. So you don't need any prior knowledge to be able to implement this course and hopefully with similar results in other prisons. Um, right now, we're finishing another book which will be available soon called Life Beyond From Prison to the Moon. And this is our most recent uh, design effort in Glenockle Prison where the participants uh, designed a very substantial lunar base and came up with an engineering timeline for the expansion of human settlement on the moon. It's about twice as thick as this book and it's going to be a very impressive volume. Uh, in the years ahead, when this pandemic has finally finished later on this year, we'll be going back into the prisons to design a world ship that will take people to Proxima Centauri, um, uh, to another star, to planets orbiting another star. So we've got a little bit bored of our own solar system for the moment. We're planning on going to another star. Uh, in future years, we're going to be designing a station on the surface of Titan uh, and maybe a station on the surface of Callisto, one of the moons of Jupiter, perhaps sending out robotic missions to search for life in Jupiter's moon Europa as well. And what we hope is that over the coming years, we will develop a corpus of work from Scottish prisons outlining plans for the exploration and settlement of space that we hope will inspire uh, space organisations and space agencies but also, quite apart from its use uh, beyond prisons, will also um, bolster and expand the uh, educational opportunities in Scottish prisons and the opportunities for prisoners to contribute to real original um, research. So I want to finish off my talk today in the Life Beyond series uh, with some examples of art uh, that was produced from our most recent course, Designing a Station on the Surface of the Moon. And I think you'll agree with me that the quality of this art uh, is quite astonishing and the opportunities uh, the prisoners have to express their creative capacities are, are really thrilling for us at Edinburgh um, who, who enjoy uh, implementing this course. So I'm going to accompany this with some music. Uh, unfortunately, this is a little bit of an in-joke for people at my age. For those of you younger, um, you won't recognise this music. For anyone living outside the UK, you probably won't recognise it either. But for those of you of my age, you can have a little bit of a chuckle at this um, part.
you very much, everyone. And as I said, I think you can see that they really do some quite remarkable work. And there'll be more of this uh, coming out of Scottish prisons in the years ahead. So again, if you want to see some of the Mars artwork, uh, you can see it uh, in this book on the back as well. And um, thank you for, for joining me on today's talk, uh, talking about the Life Beyond uh, programme in, in Scottish prisons. Uh, take care of yourselves and I'll talk to you in future lectures in the Life in the Universe pandemic series. Bye.